Hello and welcome to all to another episode of Explore Sports Management. Today we have a very special guest among us, Mr. Henry Menezes. He has decades of rich experience in the football industry. Currently, he is the deputy chairman of All India Football Federation's technical committee and former CEO of WIFA, the governing body of football in Maharashtra. He is a former goalkeeper who has donned the Indian national team colors. He is also a Shiv Chhatrapati awardee which is the highest prestigious sports award honored by the government of Maharashtra in India and today we'll be picking his brain with some of our questions to start off with sir we would like to take you back to the absolute beginning of your journey like where how did you begin your career in sports and what interested you what uh, took your interest in football and uh, where that passion came from and uh, then going forward how did you take it to the national team and playing for the national team so can you take us through that journey well first of all thank you very much for the introduction i never uh, I never knew that you know so much about me but uh, thank you very much uh, yeah it's a very a very good question i take me back to memory lanes you know to say that uh, how did you start your journey but uh, it is very surprising i was an accidental goalkeeper and not a oh. not a goalkeeper goalkeeper i was by accident the goalkeeper because i used to do athletics and i used to do high jump uh, and i had a state record also in uh, the under 19s uh, they called it under 19 but i was about 16 year old and uh, had a very good had a very good jump and uh, the jump was not also practice it was more on observation because uh, aslam bari that time uh, came from south east asian games or something of that sort there was some athletic uh, formation and he won the browns and mm-hmm. i always followed him uh, on the ground and, uh, and i felt that uh, i too can jump like him like youngster you always needed one uh, insp- inspiration in life to really follow i followed him and uh, i became a high jumper and of course because of my athletic uh, condition i used to do 4 by 100 meters really also and i i remember adil sunari wala who is now heading the athletic federation and uh, he uh, and we used to compete as competitors and uh, we did pretty well to give him a good tucker you know uh, so yeah uh, the journey started way back uh, uh, for the 1978 79 that i was like 16 16 and a half years old and uh, high jump was my forte and i never came out second in school so immediately after school you get an admission in a in a, in a 11th standard and you are still under under the age that you want to prove something and that's the time that i became second in high jump you know my 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 competitor what call him milin rajan i still remember that name never forget it after so many years after 40 years too but this guy beat me and down by 1.91 meters and i did 1.84 or 85 which was breaking my own record but not really being the best so that's the day i thought i should not pursue high jump and i moved away from that uh, position and went and stood uh, near the football ground tried my hands at being a striker because always you you know pele and all that during our times you know uh, where we very very we hear about these top guys who used to play football and be strikers so i thought of being a striker myself you know and uh, but they threw me out <laughs> to be very frank <laughs> as a midfielder as a defender nowhere no chance they put me on the left left back where i was i was i had two left feet for that but unfortunately i was back at the goal behind the goal you know collecting balls and giving it back and all this thing never thought about that position of a of goalkeeper that was the that was the the best part of it i wanted to be a striker maybe a defender a midfielder to be in the action but never thought about the goalkeeper though I was there like a month, month and a half uh, standing behind the goal post and uh, just picking up balls and throwing it inside and giving uh, you know some foul language that kya yaar goal mein maro ki tarah kitna ball maar raha hai tum log ja ke mere ko leke aana padta hai all such uh, stupid things used to come out but never ever I thought I would stay in the goal so one fine day it was uh, it was such that uh, the goalkeeper actual goalkeeper did not come and we were having some match and uh, somebody told me hey joker chal na goal mein aa jao okay and sir wish you won't believe i didn't want to stand in the goal but the ball came to me at a height you know all my attributes of high jump just matched goalkeeping you know mm-hmm. my 
my confidence of, of moving up jumping was always a forte because i was a high jumper my jump was so high that i could pick up the ball from everybody's head my diving was good because that time we didn't have a flop very flop like falling on a sponge we used to fall on a sand so the daring was there for diving all these match so well connected so well to my goalkeeping that people came and said shabash yaar tu to acha goalkeeper hai and from then onwards i started my trade in becoming a goalkeeper and all of a sudden there was one uh, angel who came uh, to the ground in the suburb of the city you know mulun i stay at mulun and at saint pius there's a ground over there very few convents are around saint pius school where i studied on the ground and uh, this guy kp krishnan and by that time i was in college uh, kp krishnan is to uh, is to coach tatas that time a very famous side uh, in india and uh, he was also a coach of bombay gym khana uh, not bombay indian gym khana which is at matunga so he came and had a look at me in one of the competitions that was called father gudinos cup so he said are ye ladka to bahut acha hai isko to hum leke jayega indian gym khana ke liye bulao ida So when I went to him, sorry, I'm talking to Hindi also, so uh, it makes no. me very comfortable. Uh, no. it, it was so interesting that he called me. Better to him, call say Hindi gym ka na aaja khelne ke liye. I said, "Nay, my mom and daddy to maarega mere ko. I don't know where they are. Always, mere ko pizza hai unlog khelne ko jayega." So, "Nay, nay, I'm baat karenge, ye karenge, wo karenge." So I said, "Nay, nay, aa sakta hai." I was so afraid of my parents, you know, because leaving this place, going to, and I was being young. That time we didn't travel that much. So this guy sent a car. Now he's going to take us. So one guy working in I still remember Natraj. He was working in Mark Shop and Dome that was in in in, in Mulun. He used to come to my house, pick me up, and take me to Indian Gym Kana Matunga. And after practice, they used to bring me to the hotel Natraj Cafe, give me vada sambar, and put me on the train to go to Mulun. And this went on for 15, 21 months. And this burger, my coach, he used to give me 15 balls. You know, Indian gym kind of has got a nice big ground that time. Now the club and all has come out. But he used to tell me, kick the ball from here as far as you can, and I should take the ball and kick the ball. And the ball used to travel 60 meters, not very big, 65 meters, seven. And I used to get irritated because once you kick 15 balls. You have to go and collect it, and then kick from there. And while everybody is playing, I am just kicking the ball for one month. And then one day, he told me, "What uh, happened?" So I said, "I want to go home. I don't want to play." So said, why do you don't want to play? I said, "Everybody is playing. Every day I come over here. I'm only kicking this ball. I'm not doing anything else." Oh okay, no! You're going to play the next week. Be ready. You just keep kicking the ball. So he made me kick the ball. and we played a match uh, in the in the in the second division of uh, of wifa that time wifa used to have only one one uh, association to take care of the league and we are the second division i still remember that game we won and i was a hero so that was the first time where i got my headline the henry shine and i am very happy for that for that man because that is the time i understood why he asked me to kick the my kick was very poor and 30 days i was only kicking the ball and i could kick the ball further than the center circle which was an advantage to the team and i respected him from there onwards and from there onwards i was pushed into uh, going to maharashtra uh, camp which was a very sad story because in any gym kana when they give you jersey shorts stocking shoes they take it back after the game so oh. <laughs> give you <laughs> bloody i don't have very close to where to go for a uh, state ka championship ka uh, state ka trial ke liye mera us kapde nahi the so one night uh, uh, on that night i thought kya karu mere ko long sleeves chahiye par mere paas shoes hai shoes i went and saw outside you know it was a 3:30 uh, camp was called the first day camp was called at 3:30 so i was told two days back uh, before that you have to go so i was searching for the long sleeve jersey i could not get the long sleeve so i wore my grandmother's uh, sweater khaki sweater cut it out from the middle made of e hemmed it up like a stupid person i had uh, stockings but uh, it had holes you know pehle ka aapko nahi is jab hole i stitched it up i had shoes 
uh, that time we should wear those leather shoes you know with the leather uh, leather studs and all that so i had gone to the mochi mochi is a shoe maker and made him mend the entire shoes one or two patches were there so actually i was looking like a like a bechara unpresentable person on the ground when i went over there there were about 125 people and nobody saw me nobody saw me and when i came home my parents were very low i said i went to <laughs> for the camp what happened there why are you so late i said no no i have got uh, they called me to collect it tomorrow also they liked me very much today actually they didn't even use me so this went on for 3 days is lies in the house that i am selected but tomorrow i have called me tomorrow they called me and the last day of selection sorish it was like 6:30 6:40 6:30 35 it was that time the the the, the days were longer and i said aaj nahi to kabhi nahi the so today is the last day and i am not even tried one and i am sitting against the uh, jali of uh, that fence of uh, wif cooperage ground waiting for my turn and this thing is happening the sun is going down i'm praying that the sun should not set very fast all these things came into my mind and to my good luck there was one goalkeeper who was playing on the right side uh, a very good goalkeeper he got injured he got injured bolo to his knee or something happened and he had to be taken to rush to the hospital and at that time i picked up my hand said sir sir me me that time we had uh, hafiz as a as the coach and john who was this play for mohan bagan that time he was a coach and he said aaj jo kar ja khada re you won't believe my first kick was behind the center circle of the ground and i always respect that keeping position for making me kick for 30 days and that impressed them the diving impressed them and my saves impressed them I won't believe I was in the team, and uh, this was the fate of mine. Uh, my first entry into football at the age of 17 and a half, and that was brilliant. Immediately, I was called as Mahatlal. Uh, that was uh, the third team in India, which was like East Bengal, Mohan Bagan, Mahatlal, Mohammed Sporting, Tata. So I was with Mahatlal, and uh, all the big shots, you know, big players used to play for them: Ranjit Thapa, Ratan Thapa, Sham Thapa. and uh, keith swain manuel balakrishnan all top top guys all top guys who play for them and i used to get very uh, rickety you know standing in the goal because there was a coach called magbul magbul was very famous that time eh? and uh, he used to put this 30 20 30 balls in front of the d and this mar dalo sale ko and the, and everybody used to kick the ball doom 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 after one of the other But I used to fly. I used to I used to dive without fear and all that. It made me very popular then. And uh, well, it was interesting. I went and joined Bank of India. Then Bank of India, I think, uh, coming down from a super division to a first division was a demotion. But at the same time, I was not the regular goalkeeper for uh, for Mafadlal at the age of seventeen and a half. So at the age of eighteen, I joined Bank of India. May April thirtieth, I finished eighteen. June. i got uh, my my job over there so i was very lucky at bank of india were a good side but not a very good side i would say but by the year 1986 i joined them in 1983 in two years uh, we went to become champions of harwood league and i was the sole uh, responsible for that and in one of the uh, one of the harwood league uh, super leagues uh, where six teams qualify and they play a league I didn't concede a single goal, and we became champions. At that time, they were the top teams over there, and uh, I was called by the national team for a camp. And the story went down, and the struggles went down, and uh, I had the great opportunity to have the highest state award in the in the state. And I think ten years before me, somebody got a Shiv Chhatrapati award, and ten years after me, somebody got I think Godfrey Pereira got, and Yusuf Antari got Shiv Chhatrapati awards. uh but i think in the in the rule of 20 years nobody got that award so i was the only person who got that respect from the state of the state government and uh, that was my entry into football and uh, being an international player i really enjoyed each and every moment of mine and uh, there were three or four coaches that uh, i went through foreign coaches indian coaches all attitudes and strategies were different with each other and uh, yes uh, Once I finished with Bank of India, there was a, there was a, a good amount of 
transition in my life for joining my Indras and uh, that time East Bengal, Mohan Bagan and Mohan used to come to ask if I want to play for any Calcutta teams but my Indras matched uh, the amount from uh, from them and that's the reason why I stayed with my Indras for the longest time. I think we pocketed each and every trophy in the country and uh, went up to the AFC quarterfinals uh, in that time you know? mm-hmm. and uh, I think that was my that was my start and uh, slowly and steadily it was uh, interesting to uh, understand that what interested me after that because uh, if you have any questions to me to answer uh, I will stop here because that was my entry into football and international football and uh, Uh, every trophy uh, given to the national team i think the saf gold uh, is with me the saf bronze is with me and uh, yeah but other 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 than that uh, asia cup i went into asian games uh, yeah was one of the probables and uh, it was interesting to play the south east asian games the south asian games the asia cup i said and uh, yeah the nehru gold cup uh, two three times yeah went on to tour uh, africa with the national team middle east and so on so yeah it was a great journey for me as a player that's actually very fascinating and also inspirational from being the person who stands behind the goal and also doing some of the desi jugards like the tie and the socks and all to actually going on and winning all the awards and trophies that one can possibly get in the country so It's really inspiring to know, sir. Thank you for sharing. Uh, so, actually, my next question is like, um, from playing at the highest level, and now you are part of the management team who sort of oversees football in India. So, how did that transition take place, and uh, how is your experience so far with that uh, administrative side of the sport? Yes, I think uh, this is a very, very touching uh, question to me in my life. You know why? I would say uh, a player is a celebrity till he plays, and once once he stops playing, you know, uh, there's a lack of recognition, there's a lack of position, and there's a there's a huge amount of pressure and stress on the players. Now what? And uh, not only all players, I don't know whether players uh, go through such mental issues, but yeah, during my time, I went through that. I did not know exactly what to do because from stardom. to get back to zero is something that you don't want to accept and uh, that's exactly what happened in my life and uh, i went a little bit break away from uh, the regular life started hiding away from social uh, social uh, gatherings and uh, didn't have a didn't have an attitude or was not very confident to face people because everybody used to ask abhi kya karega tu kya hoga so i was at work with mahindra uh, mahindra and mahindra uh, company but yes i think uh, the most important part in my life was that uh, my wife who, who said that uh, henry you are so creative why don't you put your hands up on some software technology or system management from nit and that time you know nit was very 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 famous you know and very expensive so i said okay if you are saying so she came along with me and we said okay uh i want to join an iib and uh, the guy said okay we'll take your written test we'll take this that 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 i knew that they would take me inside because uh, they asked me for 42000 rupees that time i'm talking about 19 93 94 93 94 and uh, for one full year i was out of uh, stardom but still working hiding and all such things and i i went there and i said okay i went to my office also and said that i want to do some extra education do you have some scholarships for that so they said no uh, whoever we gave scholarship they left and went <laughs> so we don't need any more scholarship so i went to the nit and i said okay i cannot pay you the entire amount so i will pay you in emi and they accepted it and i went on to become a software technology and systems management with all that attitude in the uh, sport i think i started very fast on programming and doing things so i went back to the company and i said that i have finished this uh, course of mine and i want to be an integral part of uh, developing software for 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 the company and then never believed me sports man aisa kaisa hai are to dandi maarne wale aadmi log hai so i got into this uh, making the systems for for the employees medical schemes and uh, 
transport and and uh, canteen so and safety clothes you know so roti kapda makan so i became the i became the uh, senior manager for for uh, for the welfare schemes of the company and i did pretty well and they graduated me to be a part of the union management meeting and i always felt that that would be one of the one very toughest jobs to deal with the union but it was one of the coolest things to deal with the union how the negotiations take place and all such things so it just kept on you know uh, keeping me engaged keeping me there and people liked me liked my work and i started becoming a little bit known figure in the company also i uh, dealt with to one uh, one union uh, agreement which was very very uh, uh, revolutionary i would say it, uh, in my interest because it started from uh, uh, product based uh, agreement to uh, uh, number based or time based agreement. so it was very difficult but uh, that challenge was superb it was almost like a football uh, tournament or something like that sort and very sure soon i started advising uh, writing to the president of the company that our team is not doing pretty well we are spending more money on ex players and uh, we can get some youngsters from tadas and chesagoas and things like that and uh, we should be able to have a pretty good team with that it's with, uh, with, with the best budgeting uh, sense and uh, listening to this uh, immediately i was summoned by the president of the uh, of mahindra and said that andrew you have to be our thing in our think tank and i began the think tank uh, for one year and i always uh, loved uh, to watch uh, tournaments where i went i used to see why so many billboards you know uh, boat around the ground there are 40 50 60 i used to count 60 boats mean 60 into 50000 rupees is like oh god this is money 30 lakh rupees so that is that is good kind of money that uh, people are generating from sponsorships and then i used to see them uh, having their souvenir books we generated x amount of money and i was very much into into those type of formations how they can do it and slowly the the company uh, started asking me can you draw the budget for the team and i in a jiffy could draw a budget for the team which they were surprised how i did it how i did it and there was a certain amount of tact in that and uh, today it's open to everybody but yes uh, i think that was my first step to get the confidence of the management that i can do a great budget with a good sense and uh, and good results so they asked me that you will take over mahindra united from next year onwards that you will form the team and you will be responsible for the result of the of the team i was so happy and uh, we went on for one year and two years and uh, you i was very afraid to spend the company's money because i know the returns are not going to come then for a long time and i was spending crores of money on on players but it's not coming back and half heartedly we used to put in money to foreign players and bring in not that best foreign players to the country and one day the president called me to his office and said henry i want to win the i league <laughs> it was like a shock to me but i was very cool that time. i said of course we can win the i league so what do we need to do to win the i league i said you make the conditions right and we will win me win the i league guys ask me what conditions you want to make what are the conditions that you have i said boss i want bareto i want yakubu i want mayesh gauli i want sur kumar i want venkatesh abhishek yadav i want steven dyer i went on with the list by heart you know in tr- in my mind the zub 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 so i said okay get it on the board and why the world let's see i want vijayan i want Bison Budi, I said all the names which came into my mind, and when I put it on the board, the money that uh, that that was paid to them uh, was so huge that the company said, "No, no, we cannot spend so much money." So I said, "No, you may not get all these players. Also, I've just put the names." I said, "They told me that we give you a free hand. Go ahead and do the as long as we can win the I League." And uh, survey, this is an interesting story. You know, I made the team. We appointed a new coach, and I don't want to name the coach, but he's my very good friend. But yeah, and uh, we went on to play the first match of that season with the star-studded Mahindra United team with Pareto, Yakubu. We lost our first match. That was the beauty, you know. When you when you lose the first match and you and you promise the company that you're going to win the I League, what happens to you? I don't know. 
the next day you want to hide somewhere or get back into the forest or something like that. That's all. It's not very easy to really, uh, really face such uh, such such big people, you know, who are responsible for the revenue of the company, who's spending so much money on a football team, which does not get that much return. So, uh, I went to the I went to his office and he, he was blasting at uh, the coach and he was saying that what the bloody hell we have spent so much money and we just bloody cannot beat this Air India. So the coach turned around and said that the team was not made by me. It was made by Henry. I'm just trying to accumulate, uh, get get them together and trying to trying to do my best. Uh, it may take some time to even get a victory. This is what he said. And I was like furious because the coach also was appointed by me and the players appointed by me. And I said to the boss that, uh, boss, uh, give me some chance. I think this is a very good side and I'm sure we'll win the I-League. And you won't believe, uh, Sarvesh, at the end of the year, we won the I-League, we won the Federation Cup. We won both the cups. And uh, that was a challenge and that was uh, some management tips which I have given just now. Is that When you want to do something is that you make the conditions right. And if you can make the conditions right, you can grow a tree or a plant on stars. You get So, uh, I'm not saying that is always feasible, but yeah, if you can really make the conditions right, you can really make make the impossible possible. So these are the small things that took me to to go into management to take up the challenge. And that time we didn't have such uh, systems, you know, where we come and uh, uh, do the C CRS system, you know, uh, the the CRS system that is put up in place in the last uh, three or four years by All India Football Federation. First was free for all. You go and take away players from. East Bengal, they'll come and take away players from Dempo, or East Bengal will come and take a play, Mohan Bagan will come and take a play, players from Mahindra. So, the challenge was for me is that uh, this was also a trick, and uh, you you should know how to pick up players and how to how to go and negotiate with them and get them on board. So, uh, everybody thought that Henry has picked up Mohan Bagan players or Dempo players or East Bengal players, uh, so, or Mohan Bagan players or Mohamedan sporting players. But Calcutta said they will not. Yeah, this guy has got no guts to pick up East Bengal players. And that year, Sarvesh, I picked up seven East Bengal players right from the airport after they won the championship, the Asian champion, championship, coming out of the airport at 4.30 in the morning. I whisked, whisked away about seven to eight players in which Sur Kumar, Mahesh Gauli, Sandeep Nandi, all these top players, uh, Venkatesh, uh, I remember Kulutungan, all these players were part of East Bengal. I just snapped it away from them. At that time, there was a huge uh, revolt, and all the all the all the clubs came back to Bombay to say that, and nowadays now from now on, but we will not touch your players. You don't touch our players. Uh, if you can give back our players, I said next year onwards we'll start this rule. But this year I have got these players for myself, and uh, that was that was some very very interesting interesting part over there. And uh, and uh, you know I had a football mind at the same time. With uh, with with uh, software technology, uh, uh, it opens up your mind, you know, right from having a uh, having a having a data behind, and having a data in front, having the programs inside. It's a it's an input out input uh, process output system. Huh? Management also is somewhat like that. So it was very interesting to find me out uh, to 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 think that now that I am in charge of my environment. I've become the I League champions now. I should get into something that uh, I should spread the news. How can I spread the news? And that time we didn't have. I thought we had Facebook. We didn't have Facebook. It was very new, and nobody went on to it. So I used to ask my IT department that you have to put it on the on the screen of each and every employee that matches that tomorrow. My interest match. At least, at least we'll have well wishers, people wanting to in, inquisitive of uh, knowing. And that's how social media had not started, but I had gone into the idea to say screen cube or dalo our match. Our match ka thoda snippet longa, up screen cube or dalo. Every person can see in the employee. So every employer, uh, employee started recognizing Mahindra United, started talking about Mahindra United, and it became one of the biggest recall brands for the company. Because uh, once the company is put in 10 to 12 crore rupees, uh, mm-hmm. not crore, 120 million. Rupees, if they if they put that kind of money into a team, then you want some returns back. Otherwise, it is just useless of wasting that kind of money. So, we converted the entire uh, ROI on 
a recall brand that one day before our match there would be a pre uh, competition write up on the paper and after the match there would be and between the match there would be some chapters of the paper so we used to collect each and every newspaper in india because we were a top team so we used to make news everywhere and collecting that we used to create a value and then put it in front of the company the company was not very very forward in understanding that that this is really value but a recall brand yes even our even our, our chairman that time case of mine likes to talk and he used to say that uh wr uh, sorry uh, mindra get more visibility than our mindra united get mindra and mindra get more visibility through sports than our product and that was a that was a fantastic uh, statement by him which really encouraged us and uh, and took us to next level Wow. So, sir you played an uh, instrumental role in back in 2007 in the foundation of mumbai city club is that am i correct right? yeah so i wanted to ask like what was the idea behind that uh, like uh, to create a club or what was the thought process and what were the sort of challenges while in doing so that well i would be very frank over here is that uh, yeah. sometimes uh, you have a bad day in office and uh, you don't want to work at the position where you're working and you say i've decided to leave and uh, it happened with me with my former club you know mahindra and then uh, one fine day i have a, 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 a phone call saying that uh, you have been called to the z's office so i thought go interview lene ke liye bula ya and uh, i went there and met uh, the president of levin that time was sanjay kumar and uh, he introduced me to mr goenka uh, amit goenka and uh, mm. amit goenka the dad subhash chandra so when i sat down there i actually did not recognize uh, amit goenka but uh, he was such a humble gentleman and he said that uh, henry we are thinking of uh, starting a football club and we would like you to take us to uh, making it one of the biggest club in the country and uh, i i had a smile on my face because i didn't have a job that time so i had a smile on my face and uh, on the other cabin i was seeing uh, kapil de that kiran more uh, so i was asking uh, oh uh, kapil baji also is here so i said yeah he will be in charge for cricket and uh, he will be in charge for cricket and i did not know Uh, what cricket they were talking about i was asking him uh, is there any club coming up for cricket or something of that sort i think you will come to know in the near in, in the near future because once you join us then uh, you will know everything so that's how i think uh, kapil dev joined uh, for I, icl and i joined for uh, for a club in uh, in z that is sl group uh, that they called it and uh, till that time the formation of clubs had not happened the club name was not there but they appointed me as uh, the general manager for uh, for that for that club so that's how uh, that's how i started entering into the field and uh, the boss said that henry now it is uh, june 2nd this is what he said so we will start the club in uh, october i said right June 2nd and October why you call me here in June then if you want to start in October so no no so you want to lead time yeah we'll have a lead time we'll get the players and all that i don't know if you want to start you can start it right now but henry we got only 18 days left to register to get players to find a coach to do the infrastructure everything we don't have anything right now so what do you think so i said let's give it a try and he won't believe it sir uh, it is such a funny bloody thing this is not 2nd of june but 6th of june and uh, 6th of june when they said and uh, we should uh, do it in october i said let's start today it was like like as if i was insane to talk like that and uh, i had harshad hussain who was uh, my assistant and uh, Khalid Jamil Dane Pereira uh, Darren and uh, Dane's brother the name kya so these three four of them were there from Mahindra United uh, 
and uh, I sat down with Khalid, with uh, Arshad, myself, and we named the the entire uh, coaches from uh, Kashmir to Kanya Kumari. You know, all coaches' can name leaked their board paper, uska, everybody's phone numbers and all that, and we started ringing them up. And this went, this exercise went up till night 12, 12, 30. And we managed to get around 20, 22 coaches who were good coaches on board saying that, okay, I have one player, I have two players, I have one player. So we booked 40 tickets to send it all around the country and got the players uh, to Mumbai. Two cars parked in uh, Orchid Hotel at the airport with uh, my administration head, uh, operations head, Mukul Chaudhary, who is now with uh, Jamshedpur FC. And uh, the HRD uh, man uh, who came over there with, uh, I told him, get the printer and, uh, and the and the computer. So they were all in the room, three rooms booked. And uh, from nine o'clock in the morning, people started flowing in. There was no uh, trials on the ground. The trials was in my room. I was sitting on the happened. floor. Pardon? This all happened within just a couple of days from 6 to onwards. That calling and getting people to the hotels and everything. So we sat, I sat in, sitting down uh, near the sofa and I'm looking at the players and I'm saying, uh, who sent you? He said, this, this coach sent me. Okay, bye. Good body, good height. Okay, pass. The person whom I see and I feel that he, he doesn't have that attitude, he was out. I said, karte, karte, we picked up around 17 players. And there were three players whom uh, we had to we had to negotiate. Noel Wilson, Kalyan Chobe, I think, uh, yeah, Noel Wilson, Kalyan Chobe, and one more guy was there, Subhash Chakravati. And, uh, yeah, one more guy. Three, four of them we had to negotiate. So we couldn't finish the negotiation in one day, so next day, it went to next day. And, uh, yeah, we went in uh, to say that, okay, we will get the coach. So we wanted David Booth, who was in Maldives that time. And there was there was two coaches, uh, Shabash Baumik and David Booth, two on our list. So we got David Booth on the line, and uh, he said he's ready to come. He flew in, and uh, he said foreign foreign players I will manage. Don't worry about it. So we got foreign players from Ghana. They were the top foreign players. <laughs> it was interesting that four days ke under our team made. Four days we made team. Made. Went to MDFA because that's the parent body for Mumbai. We asked them that we want to register this team SL group, and uh, we will be very a uh, team to reckon with. We'll help you out in many of your activities. So there was a little bit of conflict which I don't want to spell out over here, but yeah, we were about to pull out, pull out, pull out from Mumbai and go to another place. So by then, uh, Mumbai agreed that we should be with uh, Mumbai. And we got registered with Mumbai. And on uh, 17th, I fly to Delhi with all the papers, the registration papers and all that. And I hand over the paper to the general secretary at that time, Mr. Albert Kulasso. And Albert Kulasso uh, says to me, Are you, this you could have sent by, uh, by post also. Why did you have to come? I said, these are the most precious papers in my life that I am carrying. <laughs> if anybody, anything goes wrong here, I will be at, at, uh, at a blogger. So they were very happy and uh, we put up a team. And we don't have a ground. Boss. Forget about the ground. We don't have an office. My office used to be uh, the coffee, uh, cafe coffee day. And my, my print out used to come from Pizza Hut. So it was very interesting. Uh, are you really listening to me? Yes, yes. So, so, so interesting is that in the morning, 9 o'clock, we used to go to Kandivli, Thakur, uh, Thakur village, open up our laptop in uh, Catholic of the day, talk to our coaches and all of them are sitting. Henry, Henry, bloody hell, we don't have a bloody ground. Mm. So I went to the Thakur uh, college. Uh, Mr. Vijay Thakur was there and uh, he was very, very 
consider it when i went there i said we are doing what club we don't know the name of the club but we are going to a club and we want a ground so you use my uh, school ground from the college ground don't worry if you are in trouble i'm going to do this we want to stay over are you go to lokanwala and you stay over there i said wow i went back and i said are lokanwala is there we got this for people will do this this people will do the catering this people will do the hiring of the of the furnitures and everything and that the day a players are coming like one day before we got the entire thing set up the rooms were set up and i said no players will go out to eat they will eat in the mess so we had one room for the mess and archer and the and the and the mess uh, cook and the masher and coaches everybody went on a, a rampage like putting up the curtains setting up the uh, uh, bed and tables and all such things it was it was so challenging for us that time to complete everything and the cook cook the first meal for mumbai as we that day and the players started pouring in and that was the side that we never allowed the players to understand that he kya ho raha hai and next morning we were on the ground with the foreign players with the players and the coach nobody is getting into the ground because the ground is fully bald red color matti ka ground and the challenge so, <laughs> so david would gets up and calls up the ghanian players and says that hello felix what do you think how's the ground he said oh it's very good it's fantastic so why are you sitting let's get out and play so because the foreign players moved inside the indian players also moved inside and they supported us and i think those were the glorious days where impossible is possible you know kaisa possible karne ka kaisa conditions right karne ka these were the things and we didn't have a didn't have a didn't have a office till we got started playing our first match and uh, we got a bungalow which we converted into a office and it was it was fun it was fun challenge it was like abhi ye karna hai wo karna hai so mumbai fc became a team to reckon with wow it's, it's almost like Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing story. Like from nothing, absolutely nothing, to within a couple of weeks, a whole team is standing there right in front of you, and also bringing in international players and such was noticed. That must have been an incredible task that you just summed up in a couple of minutes. But I so oh, sir, uh, my next question is actually like um, about football and how it has evolved in the past few decades. So you have seen the ins and outs of football, like how it has evolved and. Uh, from the 80s and 90s to currently, so so so, what do you think? Like uh, compared to like the foreign countries, how can India as a footballing nation be, get there? And uh, currently, it's not the you know it's not even the most popular sport in India. So how can what what is there lacking or where we can improve or what is there a process on going for that that uh, we can at least up our game compared to the other nations? Well, first of all, we have to stop comparing ourselves with the world because we are a different country. We are a continent, continent by ourselves. You know, that's that. The first thing that we have to understand: we don't have a sporting culture. We don't have a sporting culture in the country, and uh, that's one of the minus points of uh, of Indian sports. Uh, uh, we would say cricket has taken us to a level where we are more interested because it's a national uh, national uh, game uh, that. Uh, India plays time and again, beating teams and beating countries. So only eight teams or ten teams play, but it brings in that uh, that uh, that interesting uh, that excitement, you know, that excitement, that togetherness, uh, the feeling for the country when they really are representing the the, the country. But otherwise, I think uh, we don't have that uh, that that culture, sports culture in the country, and that's where it, we are lacking today. Uh, in our times. Uh, we never heard about grassroots football or maybe uh, till a decade ago nobody heard about grassroots football so nobody heard about a coaching license so forget about grassroots football coaching license were or coaching was coaching was done by people who were 50 and above yeah in our times there was there was retired players who became coaches who had interest so they became coaches they did nis or some certification course but there was no organized standardized licensing for any any uh, coaches uh, in our time so there were very few coaches in, in the country and few coaches i think it's, it's impossible near impossible and today if you talk about grassroots football you've not even touched 
one percent of the population. So I'll give you an example. Uh, Maharashtra has a population of 120 million people and growing. So 123, and then 20 or 123 million we are we are. So what happens over here is that 11, 12% of uh, population are boys between the age group of 6 to 70. and there are about 10.5% or uh, girls who are between 6 to 17 so 21.5 million or 22 million uh, people or uh, or children are a part of that of the, of the state and we will not even reach to 1% of the entire population of maharashtra forget about india and in that we are talking about a conservative areas we are talking about things like that and still we aspire that we should be Uh, compared with the world is impossible for us to compare with that the government is trying to do some things on khelo india or the the all india football federation is trying to do with uh, with grassroots and uh, and uh, and uh, youth football and the state associations are trying to do something the district associations are trying to do something what is important over here is india lacks that pathway between school and club football and i think about four or five years back only i think Uh, they have been a little bit serious in introducing under 13s and under 15s and under 18s into the system and that's the bridge that is very important for india we are talking about baby leagues which have come a couple of years back which is converted into golden league nobody knows what name to be given so golden league is the name that is given now by the new director uh, doru who has come in and uh, given that name but how many of them are playing but at least we have seen in the seeds we don't want a two year gap structure like under 8 under 10 under 12 we want a structure that we'll say under 4 under 5 under 6 under 7 under 8 single band structure where every kid between that age group must play must be registered because we have been seeing a huge amount of uh, disparity or we see uh, indiscipline amongst the players who play over age it's 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 a disease in the system which keeps away the actual talent and that's the reason why csr has been a very instrumental uh platform for registering players so that once you register you make up your mind because at that young age you don't make up your mind for cheating <laughs> unless the parents see something but yeah i think that's important is to make it a culture it has to be like like cricket you play with a cricket we play with a bat and a ball but if you go to some other places you see that thing with the stick and a ball or somebody where we should play with the chappal tennis ball or chappal ke sabhi khelte the apan so that's the craze that we need to bring in to football also though football is a crazy game it's a simple game it's a very economical game it's a very cheap game but we need to involve everybody into it but our stakeholders are not in connection with each other whether it is a state body or district body or the national federation so it is it is it is close to impossible to understand that very soon or in a, in a short term we will be able to we will reach out to so many people not possible because one the economies of football is like people coming to the game people coming to the sport we want this sport of football to go to the people so we need to make uh, infrastructure available really near a kid to the infrastructure is disappear from us Oh, if you look at the school they play four or five matches uh, in the mssa uh, tournament or at the most eight matches or 10 matches so we want people to play if you're talking about europe if europe is playing uh, 800 matches in uh, 10 years we are playing 75 matches in 10 years. so that's the difference that is there that is the difference that is there between india and 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 the and the so 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 called countries that we are comparing ourselves with so first of all we have to set our state right we have to create opportunities for baby leagues that is from 6 to 13 or 6 to 12 we have to create opportunities for under 15s under 18s and under 15s and under 13s so that they play maximum so in my time we used to be given a coupon not to play more than 45 matches today we don't get 20 matches to play that time we used to have tournaments one in south one in goa one in kerala one down or if you go on the north on the east coast we go to uh, go uh, we go to kolkata play the ifc 
go to darjeeling from darjeeling we go to sikkim from sikkim we come back to mumbai you know, if you have gone on a on a on a trip you are gone for two months and that many matches we used to get to play but today when you look that is why better players came out that time today we need to bring in that kind of uh, situation here to give opportunities for kids to play that much so if a kid is given to play that's why baby league has been emphasizing that we make a eight team 16 team uh, league where you play single leg or double leg but give kids at least 30 to 40 matches but we want to achieve 60 to 80 matches in a year Actually, speaking from a personal experience that uh, I've sort of uh, done a little bit of work in grassroots football in Mumbai. So what I have experienced is that coaches, rather than focusing on development, they focus on winning competitions and getting the trophies because that will get them more students for their academies. I'm talking about the academy, the football academy that we have. So they focus on winning the competition rather than focusing on developing the skills of the kids and they go for the trophies and they won't give opportunity to uh, weaker players to play because they want the best player on the field and get the medals and the trophies and so that sort of mentality that I saw in some of the coaches and just sharing that with you. Like, uh, for people who are who couldn't play football professionally but they want to work in the industry and uh, they want to contribute in some way or the other like Either they are pursuing sports management or they are working in sports uh, industry anywhere. So how can we contribute in the development of football? Which areas are there where, where we have also opportunities and we can do something about it to make a, in whatever capacity we can make a change sort of thing. What are the areas that we can contribute? So basically, uh, Suresh, what happened was in 2010, I think that's the time when uh, the IFL was getting conceptualized and I was mm -hmm. uh, lucky to be a part of it because Kapil Patel was my boss mm -hmm. and uh, we got to meet Mr. Ambani and the IMG team and uh, the executive committee of All India Football Federation which came into brainstorming as to how we have to go about with the IFL and I was lucky to be a part of that, uh, of that group because of Mr. Patel and interestingly uh, uh, it, 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 it came out that uh, IFL should be formed. And I asked the question is that, how many coaches do we have right now? So I said in Maharashtra, for 110 million, 120 million that time, we had 35 coaches, out of which five, six coaches were for Mahindra. There was uh, five coaches for Air India. There were uh, eight coaches for uh, Western and Central Railway. And bus, Baki me ek ek idhar udhar hai. So only five or six teams have those 35 coaches. What about the rest? How are we going to promote football if there are no coaches? So I was asked the question is that then what do you want me to do? I said let's start because AFC has has been giving four four five five per year coaching courses to various countries like Nepal, Burma, Bhutan, Vietnam. Bhutan ka population kitna hai, apna population kitna hai. Five courses for India is like zup, evaporated. 25 into 500 people, we don't know where they are going, from which country, from which part of the of the thing. So let's start an indigenous program was my concern and they asked me to do that. B license was something that I formulated along with All India Football Federation. And that became a very big success. I'm not saying that uh, people are doing well or not doing well, their quality is good or not good. But at least standardization has come into place. The resources that we needed came out from players who could not find themselves in the game of football to achieve their goals. They broke up from there and started becoming a coach so that they remain with the passion of the game and be developing the game at the same time and making business. Uh, so that's the kind of that's the kind of change that I brought in over here. And immediately we saw that we need resources for marketing, oh, ground, oh, ticketing, oh, social media, oh, you talk about player movement, player management, logistics. Kisne socha ye sab chiz? Ki hum log to socha ta mali hai, manager hai, coach hai, katam, football is over. Football is not only about players. Football is about the things that happen outside the green patch. If you look at one match, if it's a World Cup match or a or a or a, or a AL, ACL match or a, or a I League match, ISL match is going on, you have 300 to 400 people on the ground managing the entire team, 
and you don't know what is going to go wrong when when the broadcasting starts chuane kabhi wire kaat liya wala softer chalta nahi kabhi zara slow motion barabar time pe nahi aata hai aadmi baat kar raha hai mic off hota hai there are so many complications that have we need such time of resources for each and every jobs and there is huge amount of jobs today we are saying that they are doing it through the practice but we want now resources who are well educated who understands what the meaning of income expenditure what's roi and what's the type of results that is required what challenges that are going through that so i would say that i started off with a diploma in sports football management that time with wif and killer nation i think that was the time that uh, we did all this uh, experiments you know the license successful ho gaya so we are talking about today we are talking about 8500 coaches in grassroots as well as the license earning about from 25 to 450000 rupees per it's a huge economy that we created yeah at the same time we said abhi business management apna management kya hota hai and that's why we created the wif skill nation program for diploma in football management specific football management and many of them asked me that uh, we don't have any university at us well. we were the governing body and we gave them each and every experience of all the matches the international matches the world cup matches the leagues the junior league of the state the women's league everything was managed by the students and they got the on field experience and many of them went to do their own academy see basically kya hota hai we need uh, we need more clubs to become professional aaj ka tarikh pe aapke paas kitna professional club hai 11 in isl 11 in uh, i league and baki the sub i don't know whether they are they are they are much interested to be in the system or they are not going here not there they are not professional so with 22 teams which are professional so called professional 11 are seriously on the top tier where they really put in their resources and where limited people can go okay so that's the reason why we are all worried it's a niche uh community in sports we yeah. talk about cricket me yeah cricket we can talk about that both opportunity hai ye hai wo hai but still it's limited to not more than this many teams that yeah. is why we go into event management we go into social media management content writing content ye ab us sab kuch karne jata hai because we have to wait till the i league isl grows to a 20 team program till the i league goes into a 48 team program and that the time i think it's not far away so it's not far away maybe another 3 4 years ke andar everything might change in india the women's football is developing rampantly now it's it's like it's like everywhere is becoming a professional now afc guidelines have come into to create women's uh, licensing uh, club licensing program so it is slowly and steadily starting to increase the junior junior clubs also have started increasing in a big way so the pyramid has started forming from the bottom the more the bigger the pyramid bottom the more the resources are required on the top so we have to just wait for some time but at the moment we are talking about entrepreneurship entrepreneurship many of them have started their own academy they are hiring coaches they are creating events they are doing their own content they have started with data analysis uh that they they moved into you know uh fifa came here and made uh, dy patil the hub for uh, for uh, for playgrounds playgrounds means uh, creating uh, grass grounds turf grounds so that's also interesting another thing is that how to how to create uh, how to create an environment in a community i think these are the places where right now the players people are going because there is a little bit saturation on top because number of teams are not expanding not increasing so very soon as soon as they start expanding we will need more and more resources today aff from a small 12 member uh, member team today there are like 60 people are working for aff and very soon when uh, state associations start becoming professional they will start increasing their teams uh, to to whatever whatever conditions are required for that so yes there is there is there is not too many uh, clubs but there are too many i creative ideas that youngsters can think of creating for a business so sir as a leader of a sports organization so what sort of skills or value or qualities you look at you look for in youngsters that 
maybe apply for a job in AIFF or VIFA. So, what are the things that you look for? Well, I'm I'm different from uh, many of them. Of course, uh, we always put up education as a as as a separator for for many applicants. But I always believe in attitude. You know, if you have the right kind of attitude, uh, I think you can fit anywhere. And uh, you need to be versatile, uh, ready to work in different fields. I remember uh, one of the one of the one of the gentlemen who came when I, when Coopex was being uh, renovated with FIFA uh, FIFA's ground at Coopex, uh, and uh, I I still remember 1986 when I was 22 years old. I was playing on that ground, uh, and there was. There was a talk that uh, the Bumi Puja ho gaya hai, aur Kubrick mein jaldi stadium aane wala hai. And I was so happy that time that in one or two years, I'll be playing on a stadium, international matches and all that. Because it was very interesting, but I did not know that I would sit on a seat at Kubrick and make the stadium myself after so many years. So that was that was, that was was something uh, Sobit had given to me, that uh, I got a chance to create the entire Kubrick and its, uh, its environment around that. Uh, yeah, for me, it is like, it should be the attitude. If you have the attitude, like I told you, I was just going to give you the example. I just talked over there. At Kuprej, when they were laying the turf, there was one guy. If you know him, I don't know, Prashant Godbole. Uh, I would like to take his name because very enterprising guy. He used to work for 10 sports. Uh, he was getting a good amount of money. And he stood behind me and said, Henry sir, I said, yeah, I want to work with you. I said, very WIFA does not have that kind of money to pay you. Yeah, I am not taking the money. What, to, what will pay you the money? Say, so, you know, we uh, I'm okay to play uh, work over here. So, I asked you, how much money you're getting out there? He's saying, I get 60,000 rupees. Yeah. So, I said, so, he's asking, how much I'll get over here? He said, you'll get 60,000 a year. Year also, you'll get 60,000 rupees per month. What are you saying? Because I was a friend also of his. Because that time, if you remember, Mumbai FC, May, I created, uh, ju- I did Junior Champs. Junior Champs was with yeah. like 11,000 kids and we were into the Limca Book for Record. So this guy was that time an intern, you know, helping everything and then it moved on to uh, to 10th to Force. And I said, Oh, 60,000 will get it. Oh, will get it. You'll have to bring that 60,000 rupees or maybe more than that and then you take away 60,000. So this is a challenge. And when he left after three years, he told me that, Henry, sir, in my previous company, I had to pay for the delay. But when I came to WIF, I had to pay for the delay in my delay. Every month, I got the, got the money. So, what does that mean? Is that I did not do anything. He did it for himself. And that was his attitude. That could be, oh, I will work with you. I will work with you. So basically, attitude is something because whenever you are coming to work in a sports field, you will have all the requisites required to apply for that job. But attitude is something that I would always uh, put it first. That if you have the attitude, uh, nothing is impossible. That's actually a great piece of advice for everyone who is listening. Uh, so, sir, you. Uh, were the for, you are the former CEO of WIFA, the governing body of football in Maharashtra, and now you are with the uh, AIFF, the deputy technical director. So, what I mean, so what are the differences between both of these roles? Like one of the focuses on state and the other overall C is overall India. So, how are both of these roles different for you? And what are the sort of day-to-day activities that happen for you in a general working day? What's it like? So I am the deputy chairman for the technical committee. Okay. So it is interesting to understand that at WIFA for me everything was new, and uh, from a club which has got all the resources, all the money, and all the fame already present there, it is good to work with them. But for a state which has got no money, no fame, very always every time that somebody other comes and abuses you. Yeah. It's very difficult to work with that. But it was a fantastic challenge and it was a fantastic journey. And I must thank Mr. Albert Kulaso, the former Secretary of All India Football Federation, who recommended me to uh, Mr. Patel, Prafil Patel. And Prafil Patel said that, uh, and they would like to have you as the CEO of our state. And I said, 
sir that's like a graveyard why do you want me there <laughs> nothing is going to happen over there so you know no, you wait for two months of ab- absorb everything and then we will we will do something so i never knew that i would go to fifa along with this guy get the money for making the stadium and and build it myself it was like crazy for me also but all said and done the the coach education program from maharashtra was a big hit and that was that revolutionized or brought back brought back the entire interest back into the state and today if you go to every state and uh, you ask anybody if you have a license coach and they will be proudly saying we have a license coach and that's the that's the beauty of it either you have a grassroots leader or you have a, a license coach so interesting is that part uh the basic the basic thing that uh, you were asking me is the difference between working in a club working in the state association working with the aff yeah so like yeah so my god just they are just fixed uh, uh, program you know that what, what do you call that a road map has already been prepared over there for 5 years you know mm. you have to just follow that you have to bring 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 all all things in line with that but at cooperage or at w act it's a different scenario you actually need to bring in an asset register to mm. understand what we want to do what are our assets what do we have mm. and suddenly from nowhere everybody says we don't have anything we don't have ground proper ground we don't have this that that acha chalo ground to fifa dene wala hai flood net ke sath now what do we have so if you have a ground what do we have we have a rooms under it that's our assets so our d license started working over there yeah so coaching was one of our biggest assets that created money also for us generated money for us referees coaching also generated nothing came free now boy once you got in a professional guy nothing comes free you want my ground you pay any play yeah even mdfa is to pay 1000 2000 whatever it is but they are paying thousand hundreds of masses so when you calculate that the money is a good enough so mumbai mumbai city fc came to play ongc came to play air india came to play there were tournaments happening over there then we created a small pitch so what happened in our asset register we started asking ourselves a question what are the assets that we can create so we made two small ground manchester united soccer school was started there then later on went on to become indian football school and then went on to become something else but all these created a revenue for the for the for the state and slowly and steadily we started increasing our coffers and with the coffers increasing more uh, coaches started coming in more coaches started coming in more teams started coming in and so on the structure of league started becoming under 15 under 13 under 15. our sub junior junior our junior girls i would say uh, our girls we had only eight teams earlier playing in the district eight districts participating but in seven years 28 out of 35 districts started participating in it it was such a runaway success to bring in the girls and play and the girls kept on all high because they started representing the country after some time and today we are say we are proudly saying that yeah we have got three or four girls who have already represented our country in the in the under 17 world cup with under 20 team or which is going to which is going to be uh, the iwl and all such things so we are very happy that if you create a such register asking what are what are the what are our assets what are things that we have that people can participate in what are the things that we have what are the what are the products that we have that people can participate what are products we have that people can buy what are the products that we have that people can pay for and what are the products that we have that people can use so once you come to know in the asset register that boss mere paas under 13 ka league hai under 15 ka league hai under 18 ka league hai mere paas senior league hai mere paas women's league hai i got inter district competition i got the professional league or iwl qualification competitions i got the under 13 i league ka qualification competition so these start structurizing in such a way that we have to put that in a calendar and the calendar suddenly started getting full and when the calendar suddenly started getting full more and more players used to play the csr started uh, uh, the csr crs the crs started started uh, started filling up we had more data and more people more money and that's how 
we started to create an atmosphere that was very viable for football and that's how the interest came in and i think lately 6 months back or 3 or 5 months back or 6 months back yeah i think mark maharashtra is number 2 in the country after bengal so that was the pride you know uh, what we talk about is that the difference between the club is that you got everything ready made you ask for finance it is there you ask for the ground it is there you ask for the lush green ground it is there you ask for aeroplane flight it is there in a state association you need to create the entire scenario you have to work for the revenues to come in to pump it back into the into the state. same thing happens with aff but right now aff has got the revenue from the league they have got getting in their money is from the fifa grants and they are getting a government uh, sanction uh, grant also so there were two three uh, ways of getting the revenues plus the crs program also gets in a good amount of revenue so overall they are now we can say that budget wise they may short fall short of in in small percentages than earlier being deficit on 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 uh, on uh, on bringing in that kind of money but that that's the rule that goes in because aff is the body which works with the state association and they have now not even do, they are only doing the junior teams that is the under 13 15 18 rest everything is looked after by the isf so interestingly if you look at the three different uh, 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 different styles it's three different styles the most difficult is the state association because one they don't have the proper constitution so they don't have professionalism the people there are honorary so we have to respect their their time because if they can give half an hour one hour or three hours some of them give 12 hours some of them give half an hour some of them give none so that's the reason why there is a mismatch in everything that we do of 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 of, of, of bringing uh, the holistic uh, game up and i don't know about the district association <laughs> <laughs> I'm forgetting about district association. If you talk about district, very few districts are very capable. Kolhapur, Mumbai, Thane also is not there. So Kolhapur and Mumbai are two uh, great, uh, great destinations that you can go for football, and maybe Nagpur to a certain level. Otherwise, I think districts need to be hand handled, uh, uh, hand holded uh, to to create their own uh, environment. uh for an 18 year old who wants to enter the industry and specifically wants to work in football uh not as a uh, player as an athlete but he wants to work at the management side of it so what advice would you give that 18 year old person who is just starting out his career now basically the 18 year old should be concentrating on his studies first yeah <laughs> that that's the first thing because we do that mistake when you are a sports person you know when you are a sports person you always want to be uh, you always want to be tendulkar or bachan buddhi or sunil chetri or a messi or a ronaldo and you forget that uh, where your plan b and uh, that's always always the case and that's the reason why we say that hold on to the time that you know that you are not going to achieve what you are aim for and take the path that where you can go to achieve your other dreams you get me so you have to decide not at the age of 18 at the age of 18 how old are you first i'm i'm 22 yeah that's what i'm saying you are graduate right now yeah so um, ha huh. so you have to reach your graduation at the age of 18 you're not not here also not there also mm-hmm. correct so you have to think properly is that what i need to do at the age of 18 you can go in for an orientation an orientation to a club to an association to a federation and go and have a look at each and every department maybe if they allow you for a three months or two months or three months internship go ahead and see and what is that interest you because as a passionate footballer you only understand the game that is interesting you don't understand the intricacy behind the game and you have to actually go and experience that so if you are good in in it or if you are in good in science or if you are good in commerce then accordingly you can set up your your mind as to where i should go finance you can be a ca finance and 
and be behind a club get mm-hmm. inside a club you can be a science uh, graduate become a physiotherapist or a doctor or or whatever that is and be with the club nobody can stop you or if you are an art student you become a psychologist or or, or something of that counselor or something of that sort so in each and every uh, uh, vertical of of our career study we can actually associate ourselves uh, with the game it's not necessary that you have to be a sportsman to uh, adjust yourself so you have to keep in mind if i'm 18 years old i'm not thinking right first of all my passion is there but i'm not thinking right so it you need to you need to understand that okay now i've got the interest you might go in for a internship two months three months whatever it is and you go and see that oh my interest is in operation or my interest is in finance and what am i doing i'm doing commerce so there could be finance my interest is in ground uh, to create the ground because no no longer we call them malis today we call them ground men ground men are one of the biggest uh, influencers of football today i remember some of them uh, you know in the world cup getting in one of the top most ground men of the world and he used to say that maybe messi or somebody comes on the ground i simply start the sprinkler down i tell him get out of the i can't tell him get out of the ground but the sprinkler tell him get out of the ground so that's the kind of authority they have so what i'm trying to say is that at the age of 18 i think you should focus into your into your career what you want to do you want to be a sports uh, management you get into sports management at the age of 18 and you can pursue that you can get into any game whether it is football cricket hockey kabaddi whatever it is get your experience in which because everybody has got a similar structure in terms of operations and, and in terms of in terms of the 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 hierarchies or what you call the vertical uh, of of sports so you can get into any of this and understand that what you want to learn what you want to understand come back finish your study because the plan b is very important for you in life so i would never say an engineer or today also i tell kids who are who are like 20 22 24 They say I want to play for IIT. That's fantastic. But you first study, study your graduation, get over. You pursue what you want to pursue. If you don't, you have plan B in place. That's actually very beautiful advice for everyone. Yeah. Actually, yeah. We even say that you should first get experience and exposure and do as many internships or anything in the college time to get the exposure there. So yeah, that was the end of it. Uh, the session so thank you so much thank you sir for coming and it was a pleasure to talk to you and thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience with all of us it was great to hear you yeah thank you very much and uh, i think uh, it's very nice of me to see you complete this interview yeah <laughs> <laughs> because I, because stories are something that you you know you don't you don't look at the time so mm. yeah it was interesting talking to you the person was very valid i think it prevailed uh, with many youngsters so god bless them and uh, may the game grow to the expectations that all of us have thank you thank you uh yeah